afternoon. Hello, welcome to another Tweedy Outdoors video. I'm just here for uh, an afternoon stroll, possibly into the early evening, on this glorious winter's day down here in the South Downs. I've come to my usual station, Hassocks, done the very familiar walk up towards the Downs. I'm probably going to head for somewhere around um, Kima Down, is it called? And do a little bit of al fresco cooking today. It is five degrees, my phone tells me. It doesn't really feel that cold. I have the sun on me now, which really helps. Sure, that's good for you. Standing sheep. So here I am back on the Kima Bostel again. I've featured this a few times in different videos. It's a very familiar route for me now. One of these ancient droving routes up and down the South Downs. Already gained some height. Very far reaching views. Does uh, the sky definitely look sort of wintry? I suppose it's also reflecting the colours in the landscape. It's all a bit sort of pale. Nice view down there to Everflight vineyard and you can see um is that possibly a winery they have some buildings possibly the owner's home and maybe a winery at one end I'm trying to figure out where the exact spot is that i sat when i was being attacked by flying ants and cooked that uh, chili con carne it was sort of roughly around here i moved didn't i part way through sorry about my shadow being in shot <laughs> terrible camera work should we go say hello to the swing over here still there And a new swing look that's nice that was the spot where i sat and cooked the was it fake steak and mining ability potatoes jersey royals that weren't particularly royal not particularly regal Seem to be having a delightfully unstructured wander. I just came up to do a little bit of the South Downs way. Meters, literally just meters. This is now another Bostel here. I think it heads down in, the, in that direction. This is Burnt House Bostel. So it's another area of uh, downland, of course, up here on the South Downs. Just thought I'd pause here for a minute because I actually get a good view, I think, of Court garden farm and that is the wine that i have brought along with me today so it's incredibly local i picked it up from the shop in hassocks there is a sort of more like a beer shop but they also have a couple of local wines back on the south downs way here was good to be back it's surprisingly busy actually considering this is a weekday it's a friday but i suppose anyone that can get out is making the best of this weather i think it's supposed to turn next week we're back to storms again next week so while it is sunny and blue skies make hay while the sun shines all that another dew pond here i love how windswept those trees are either side it's like they've been styled by the coiffure oh, sorry didn't mean to disturb you sheep excuse me isn't that lovely very clean looking sheep. Are you, uh, are you real sheep or are you just AI generated sheep? Sorry about my shadow again. There's a few tumuli, tumuli, still not sure how to pronounce that. It's a word I've only seen written down. Possibly barrows here by the South Downs Way. They're quite irregularly shaped, it's not clearly. A bell barrow or bowl barrow. Really have no idea where I'm going. Well, I know where I am. I know where I'm heading, but I don't know where I want to be heading, which is great. I'm sort of just a completely aimless meander across the South Downs today, which is wonderful. For once, not in a rush. Don't have to be anywhere by any particular time, other than the fact it will get dark and harder to walk. You can see the sea over there, look.
nearly at Ditchling Beacon now, just on my completely aimless meander. This is a spot where I've sometimes sat in the summer, watched the sun go down around here. There's a sort of memorial tree here and I'd normally sit somewhere nearby. Someone's been naughty and had a fire. Not me. Can't quite make up my mind where to sit. 20 to 4 now, so I really do need to get a move on and sit down somewhere because I'm going to run out of light, aren't I? And, uh, and I'm got a I have a feeling as soon as the sun goes beyond that hill, it's going to start to get quite cold quite quickly. So uh, I might head back towards the Kima Down, the, the bit where I came up. Back across this little patch of tumuli again. Just such a, a compelling scene there, that frozen dew pond. The sun starting to hang low in the sky over there. Wonderful. I'm back at the spot now where Kima Bostel meets the South Downs Way and we have Kima Down heading down over here that's slightly in a quandary about where to sit and cook because I don't really want to miss whatever there is going to be to see of the sunset but any further downhill I go here I'm going to potentially lose it behind the brow of the hill so it feels a bit blatant to be just sitting right next to the South Downs Way cooking my lunch dinner whatever it is but um, I don't think there's anything actually wrong with that just might attract some quizzical looks. Decided to come back to more or less the same spot where I was to cook that uh, flying ant attack interrupted meal in the summer. Um, I, you know, I just had to sort of sacrifice the view of the sunset because it just, just wasn't really a good spot to sit up there. It's a little bit chilly now, of course, as soon as I stop moving, there's a little bit of a breeze as well. So I'm going to try and um, get on with this. I made a bit of an impulse purchase earlier and I bought a new pan, um, I think partly inspired by that trip up to Hadrian's Wall with Mr. WC21. Um, hello, Mr. WC21. Thought uh, there are just some dishes that it's just much more practical to have a slightly larger pan. This is, uh, it's not huge still, it's something like 1.2 litres capacity. It's one of those um, MSR ones. <laughs> Look at me here doing gear reviews. I I'm a little bit skeptical about this pot gripper setup thing. I've got a feeling that might go badly awry but uh, let's give it a give it a go today and uh, see how it goes so I'm going to be making tortelloni in brodo which is a pretty simple dish I've done something like this before I've got some fresh pasta I'm going to make a kind of soup and cook it in the soup so it's a just pretty straightforward hopefully one pot dish which won't take hours because it is cold and I am a bit hungry I had a, a sausage roll earlier. you don't need to know that do you so I have a few um a few assorted things to go in and make the soup base in there. What am I going to do first? I am going to probably chop up a bit of garlic, I guess. I'll chop up this bit of garlic with my slightly numb fingers. It'll hopefully still just about do the job. And this table, which seems to be increasingly not a flat surface. Wow, well, yes, at least one of my hands, really quite numb fingers. Oil in the pan. First use of this new pan, so I hope it's gonna go okay. It is actually lighter. Without the lid, that actually works out a bit lighter than my billy can even, because I guess it doesn't have the handle and all the other bells and whistles. That's a bit blustery. Oh well. I really need a slightly higher windshield, don't I, ideally. And go with some garlic. <laughs> even my chopping board's not straight, look. I know that's not hot yet, but in a moment, I really need to not do that and use the uh, the gripper instead. I think I can just wedge it on there, or is that going to end up? Hmm. I'm not convinced about these these grippers. I'm going to chop up some courgette. It's a broad bean. That's not courgette. Ugh, feels a bit unstable. Shake around. 
I've also got some nondescript mints and some broad beans. I thought they would be uh, nice additional ingredients. They can go in there too. Bit of pink sky over there. I don't think we're going to see a very dramatic sunset from here. I should have been a bit higher up, but uh, oh well. It's a little bit, um, a bit blustery. I'm sure that is sort of cooking in there. <laughs> this might prove to have been a bad idea. Well, that is hopefully cooking after a fashion. Going to open up today's wine. Uh, I think I have featured this at some point over on English Sparkling with Tweedy. For those of you who are uh, subjecting yourself to that nonsense. This is their, uh, they call it Classic Cuvée. A standard blend and it is a 2018 and it is just over there I can see just about still see the vineyard my fingers are a bit cold <laughs> right pop mm, like that to have been a little bit more um, pronounced maybe it's the cold weather <laughs> Big moose on that hmm even in this freezing cold weather, I'm getting some nice apple-y, stone fruity sort of hints on the nose. <sighs> Going a bit lemony, maybe. Mmm. Nice and fruity on the palate as well. Good. Slightly questioning now the wisdom of bringing um, <laughs> chilled sparkling wine in this kind of weather. But on the plus side, I haven't needed to bring any um, chilling equipment, chilling apparatus. Probably down to two degrees or something now. <laughs> cold hands. Yeah, I mean that doesn't seem to be sizzling as much as I'd really hope it to be. So I, I might, I might put some water in now and try and get that to come to a boil. Perhaps put the lid on as well, and then I can start to boil the pasta. So I'm going to put this nearly freezing cold water in. Can't see what I'm doing, can you? It's off the bottom of the screen. And, uh, funny sort of a lid. It's kind of, um, I guess it just goes on like that. The uh, usual tomato stock cube, half thereof. Sort of meant to latch onto there, mm, sort of. Stick that in there. Uh, I hope that's doing something like coming to a boil. <laughs> hmm. That's what the sky is doing over there. Shall we look in the other direction? Can't be bothered to. My fingers are too cold to press the button on and off. It's something like that. I mean, it's all right. There's a bit of pink. There's a streak of sky over there that's almost kind of purple, it's so sort of pink. Funny colours. I'm definitely having a bit of a hard time getting this thing to boil. It's just so cold, I think, and uh, there's a little bit of a wind and that's disrupting the, uh, the flame on the, uh, the gas stove. My hands are pretty cold. <laughs> I should really have started half an hour earlier, shouldn't I? Rather than faffing about walking around trying to find the uh, perfect spot and then ending up somewhere I can't really see the sunset particularly well anyway but uh, oh well oh. <laughs> cold I'm tempting to use my bag as a sort of additional windshield there to see if I can improve the efficiency of the gas stove I've been sitting here ages and it's uh, guessing that's not hot there's a bit of steam there but it's just nowhere near a boil so um mm. All well and good having this larger pan so I can do more ambitious meals, but um, just can't actually get the bloody thing to boil. Right, well, um, I think things have gone slightly awry. It looks like the gas canister has run out <laughs> and um, this still hasn't really quite come to the boil. So um, I think I might just sort of have this <laughs> lukewarm soup point you down. It doesn't look absolutely terrible. Any kind of warm food in these conditions probably going to be appreciated. I might just uh, I want to see if that's sort of vaguely edible and um, and just abandon the pasta because I think the gas has just run out. Amazingly, I sort of partly refilled this earlier, but yep, that just that just seems to have run out. So can I have a funny sort of soup with probably crunchy. Um, Crunchy courgettes. I think we'll put this one down as a bit of a failure. It's just too cold to cook. Hmm. Well, I mean, the vegetables are sort of semi-cooked. 
we'll just call it a weird soup which should have had some tortelloni, tortelloni in it shall I throw these, um, these chunks of cheese in <laughs> see what that does uh, not my finest hour culinarily but um, I guess it's about freezing now it wasn't meant to be I guess <laughs> look at me huddling around this bowl of um, this bowl of tepid soup like <laughs> some sort of Victorian street urchin well I don't know what the hell I made there but um, I, I'm appreciating the fact that I have some sort of vaguely warm food at the moment it's not it's not actually terrible based on the um, you know the any port in a storm principle Okay, that is finished. I'm going to pack up with some haste and um, and get moving because uh, I'm a little bit cold. Right. Oh, almost leave no trace. I, that, that actually was a bit of litter there, but I've picked it up. Uh, there we go. Hashtag leave no trace. Pretty sure that's clear. Now going to do a uh, slightly dangerous stumble down the hillside in the dark very glad of uh, being able to get moving I think that will probably help in a few minutes time I'm sure I will have warmed up a bit you see a bit of the remnants of the post sunset glow there maybe <laughs> cold just need to find a uh, safe way down this hill I don't really want to be having an accident in these sort of temperatures well this doesn't look hugely safe but uh, oh well looks kind of steep <laughs> oh it's good to be moving though really good to be moving oh <laughs> oh I think I've chosen a very bad path down the uh, ridiculously steep chalky hard path down the hill silly Tweedy why didn't you just do all of this about an hour earlier and then uh, could have been back on the train by now in the warm enjoying some of that freezing cold sparkling wine <laughs> silly Tweedy I don't know if you can see the frost glistening on the mud here I don't think I've quite found the proper track yet uh, actually slightly difficult going underfoot when the the mud is this frozen <laughs> silly Tweedy I think if I can get back on that track I will probably be okay because it's fairly easy walking from then on oh yes looks like this is it the uh What's this called? The Kima Bostel. <laughs> oh, it's a bit cold. I think I've thawed out a little bit thanks to moving a bit. Still a, a bit of a slightly chilly hand, slightly chilly toes, but uh, getting there makes such a difference to just move, doesn't it? When uh, when you're cold, I'm uh, I'm feeling much better now, and uh, I've had the head torch on for a bit. That's the strange red patch on my forehead but uh, you can't see it of course with the terrible lighting from this uh, light attachment but there's a, a beautiful bit of moonlight here and some stars out and I managed to do a tiny bit of night photography with my phone perhaps I'll put that on the screen it's not amazing it never is but uh, lovely really I can walk just about without the um, the head torch on now I think kind of a bit scary crossing this road in the dark huh. Ooh, terrible footage. It's not quite difficult to um, to walk and talk. I'm back in civilization now. Pavements, street lights, all that kind of stuff. I don't mind admitting that one really did not go to plan. The cooking just, uh, it was fighting against the elements and it was obviously just not meant to be. So um, <laughs> to supplement my rather meagre meal earlier i've got a bag of chips from the uh, hassocks fish and chip shop back at hassock station now i feel pretty warm now actually now that i've done all that um, 
Mm. 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 Having done a bit of actual exercise and you know, having got moving, I feel pretty warm now. But I was freezing up on that hill. Don't mind. It. Don't mind saying. Oh, those are very good chips. And not just because <laughs> freezing cold, and I appreciate any form of hot food that I don't have to cook myself on a gas stove that seems to be struggling in a mild breeze and freezing conditions on top of a hill. Mm. So, um, <laughs> here with my bag of chips, I will, um, I will sign off for this video. Uh, I hope some of the, the content there was salvageable. And the skies were beautiful earlier. Hopefully I managed to get some nice scenery shots before it all uh, went a little bit pear-shaped towards the end there and there's still something watchable but, um, if you have sat through this far thank you very much for watching and I'll see you on the next one cheers oh not good